is this going to lead to increased commercial availability of this stuff? Like, or is this going to be a new class of club here, certainly in the iron space that is going to be forever more expensive than the existing, you know, if I want a great set of Mizunos, a great set of Strixons retail, I'm going to put, you know, 1200, 1300, 1400 bucks, somewhere in there for a set of irons. Okay. Are these always going to be two to three thousand dollars for for a set of these things what is up everybody how you live in no putts given tony and chris we're back at it brief pause subscribe international sim symbol for subscribe this this i did not realize tony that we're wait, uh, wearing our favorite salad dressings on our hats today <laughs> did not realize that's what you were into today, I, but, is there a, is is there a banana salad dressing? What's going on there? There is now. There is now. No, I just like to have t-shirts with inspirational quotes. So I'm going to I'm gonna stick to that. PGA Championship Week. Woohoo, the fourth best major. Maybe yeah, the yeah. fifth best major. <laughs> it might be the fifth best of the, right. of, the, of the top four. We'll talk about that. There is some cool different equipment stuff. So we're going to really dig into one particular topic little tour stuff there are some things that happen i mean again it's a major week but quail hollow which is uh, an elevated again again i don't love the elevated concept i like the bigger fields i like having a, a cut that matters this feels a step too close to yeah I don't know, whatever but I, I don't like it as much anyway rory went nuts last day it was you know rory and xander effectively kind of a match play situation we had a similar situation on uh, the ladies' tour with Rose Zhang and Sagstrom, where they basically, again, coming down the stretch, they were number of shots clear of the field. Anyway, Rory went ballistic on the Can back. We, I, again, how many times have I said, I feel like every week, Taylor made having the best tour year, ever, tour year ever. It seems like every week, whether it's on the men's side or the LPGA side, Taylor made can, can rat, chalk up another one. So here we go again, right? Yeah, and, you know, again, it's Rory. He did amazing things. But two things we wanted to pick out looking into his bag a little bit. What was the first thing you noticed, Tony? <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, he carries four wedges. Three of them are tailor-made four, wedges. Yeah. Okay. Contractually, it looks like he has a gap in the, in the bag. And we've talked about on tour that, that lob wedge space. A lot of guys go to the Vokey van and grab a T-grind. Rory went with the low bounce K. So what does that I mean? That, so what does that tell you? Well, first of all, one, like I said, it's interesting that 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 title slash Vokey continues to get play in that spot in particular. So when we talk about wedges, yes, you know, gap wedge, sand wedges, grinds. It really seems like that lob wedge space, whether you play a fifty eight, a sixty, or even something higher lofted than that. Give me a sixty four. All day. Golfers, but it seems to me like golfers are finding yeah. that they can't find exactly what they want in TaylorMade, Callaway, you know, Cleveland, whatever. Well, Cleveland maybe not so much, but Vokey, T grind, low bounce K grind. We're seeing these in the bags of staffers that are on, you know, again being paid a lot of money by other companies to play their gear. What do you make of that? I mean, it's. That, that low bounce K is unique, kind of a, a full sole low bounce wedge, if you will. So, you know, I don't I don't know if that's something he carries every week. It's the first time I've noticed it coming up. Uh, you know me, I don't I don't pay attention to every last detail of, of what goes on on the tour in and out every week, the bags. But caught my attention, if only because that was the first wedge work, works release of the year was that low bounce K. And I'm like, interesting. Because, mm -hmm. again, we talk about like that T grind because of the versatility, right? The heel, toe, trailing edge relief. It gets a lot of play on tour. K yep. grind is, it's not to say it doesn't get any play, but it's it's not. The low bounce K is not the T grind in terms of popularity. So I think it's. You know, it's probably something very specific to what Rory was looking for, but it was it was kind of cool to see that one pop up. You're like, all right, yeah. well, that's that's not the standard thing we typically see. Mm -mm. No, the other thing I thought was interesting, again, we've seen this now in a couple different players, Rory going to the core head. We're talking with driver specifically. So QI-10, obviously they have the LS, the, the standard slash core head, 
and then also the most forgiving 10k model which is the one people have maybe heard the most about because that was the headline the 10k the banner ads the commercials you see r 410 k but rory went to the meat of the market one the one right in the middle the core head picked up ball speed and a little bit of forgiveness so again when we talk about the best driver head you know for you based on whether it's your swing speed or what you need you can't really make any assumptions it's hard it's hard and, and again like Rory gets to work with the van, so typically there's some kind of hot, hot melt in there that allows you to kind of manipulate CG. Maybe it's a little more forward, sort of, maybe, I'm speculating, could be built to be a little bit lower spinning than, than a typical max ad, max ad that could have gone the other way to make it something between a max and a, and a 10K. Mm -hmm. Obviously a little more freedom there, but it, it just goes to show you, right? You can't just assume that, hey, this guy swings this this swing speed, right? Whatever Rory is, 120-ish, I'm guessing at this point. Plus. Maybe even more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And and make assumptions. It's a lot of a lot of variables come into play. So it's uh mm -hmm. yeah, it's not mm -hmm. surprising. A little interesting. No, we saw it the other week, Justin Thomas. I know he hasn't played particularly good golf as of late, but he switched into the Titleist T S R two, which again would be within Titleist line most comparable to the QI ten core. That's it model so you're starting yes you can make that a little lower spin or whatever but you're basically starting with a more forgiving driver particularly more forgiving on miss hit so to me the message is hey even the best players in the world are being mindful of what happens when i don't hit it right where i'm trying to hit it what happens when i catch it a little high in the face maybe it's that high toe maybe it's a little low heel whatever their miss is they're saying I'm better off to go with a slightly more forgiving head, maybe manipulate it a little bit. Tweak and tune. And, tweak and tune. Yeah, tweak and tune. Like I said, Rosang, got to give her props. Uh, Cognizant Founders Club, uh, sorry, Cognizant Founders Cup edged out. Maddie Saxon coming down the back nine. She it's also an all went Callaway berserk. playoff, right? Was there a playoff? She went there was berserk. A playoff, right? burning four out of the last five. I I think this has a lot to do. Um, Callaway had their ball launch, you know, in, in, in January, and I, I allowed Rose to take a picture with me. So I have no doubt that uh, <laughs> that, that played a significant role awesome. in in all this. Anyway, a uh, shout-out to Chris Goderup as well. He won the opposite field events, the Myrtle Beach, also known as the YouTube Qualifier Classic. I guess none of the YouTube people – that made it, made any real noise, which nobody really expected him to. That wasn't the point. But mindset, first win, I believe, for Bridgestone Mindset Golf Ball. So, no. Have you tried there. that yet? That, I, no, I haven't. I mean, I've read about it. I, you know, talked to the guys at Bridgestone about it. I have not dedicated myself to that yet. Should I? It's interesting, right? Just kind of forcing yourself. And I'm a guy who, who has habitually struggled to develop any kind of pre-shot routine everybody <laughs> every good golfer says you should have and i'm like that's ah, fine yeah. uh, you don't but i think yeah it's it's helpful to kind of so, yeah. forces you if you will like you can ignore it and be like screw those circles you can't make me but it kind of steps you through a process that potentially leads to better shots and then i find you know just using it for a round and then going out and trying a different ball because that that's where we're at right so much new stuff to try i'm like let's sure. experience the world right now Sure. You kind of just remember that process and go, all right. Tell one, me, two, give me the 30-second elevator pitch on, like, if someone says, okay, I'm not going to read all that. Too long, didn't read, whatever. What t Take me through the process because I've seen the picture. Yeah, you know, for it's me, it's, again, like circles. you're just working your way from the different circles. And so, like, the first one is basically choose your target right? and then kind of focus, right, get your mind wrapped around it. The second mm -hmm. one I kind of view is, all right, let's 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 double-check the target and then it's, it's go. Right. And it's that uh, part of it, too, is, you know, Brant Snedeker, Snedeker used to say, right, hit it before you can think about it. And so <laughs> right. it's really like I think right. it helps like, all right, I'm going to there's my target. No, no, that that is definitely my target. That's where I'm going. Deep breath. Go. Right. Like so just fully commit. Kind of kind of quiets target, the noise commit to the target. Pull the trigger. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Quiets the noise a little bit, I think, because mm -hmm. you, you, it is like, all right. Everything is about the target, target, target. Not like, oh my god, I, I can't go over there, and and if I hit it over there a little bit, that's going to be bad. And oh, don't top, you know. It's just like hit the damn. Stay ball, on so. target. 
Yeah, and whatever. I think I think once you get in the routine, just do it. You don't need a ball, I don't think. So mm-hmm. all good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be interesting. That leads us right into some good equipment stuff. So we're we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna spend the bulk of the time here, people. Buckle up. Because we got something a little new for you, a little different. Tony has dug into this a lot, so I'm just going to ask you questions. First of all, let's start with this. What is it? Tell me about it. so funny. Like, I'm laughing because I literally just got an email from somebody who... Promoting Bryson DeChambeau and 3D printed irons as the next disruption in golf. And the thing I'm going to tell you about is... Cobra's Limited, L-I-M-I-T, 3D. See what they did there? Cobra the Limited e Iron. Yeah, because you can... Yeah, E3. Yeah. Um, yep. The first commercially available set of 3D, fully 3D printed irons. All right, pause there for a second. Cool. The first commercially available set of entirely 3D printed iron so what does that mean i mean we've talked people probably have a decent idea is what you know forging is you again you have this hunk of metal these big hydraulic hammers that basically press things into place forging it at temperatures blah 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 casting right you create a mold of what you want the final club to be again i'm simplifying this you pour in really hot uh metal right liquefied metal it cools you take it out of the cast, and you have a cast iron wedge, whatever the case is. Things are generally a version of those, but now you're telling me I can I can get my Epson out over here and go <laughs> exactly just whoop, just yeah press and print. I can, what? Yeah, it's man, it's it's crazy. This to me is a guy who's fascinated by some things, and you're like, this shouldn't work. Like this, this feels like sorcery because you're basically. Kind of start with this little base, right? You got to have something to affix what becomes the iron too, just to get started. Then you take metal powder, powdered metal, and then you use laser beams to turn this powder into an iron. Which, I'm in my mind, Austin Powers. Yeah, this is it's sorcery. They, like if you said, "How do you do it?" Like it's sorcery. I'm like, okay, that sounds right because it's the only way this makes sense to me. But yeah, it's it's basically turning powder into golf clubs. And but and then you're it's, printing it with lasers layer by layer, right? right. You're just adding yeah. a layer on to I mean these are very very small layers, no doubt. Yeah, these but, are not uh yeah. These these are not what you would expect on that like your your three your three scoop cone, right? Right. So, all right. So, we're going to bounce back and forth there a little bit between what the hell is 3D printing? How does it work in a golf club and these irons and so so Talk to me about the irons more. So this is Cobra, right? Irons. Tell me about the irons themselves. What? Who are these for? What are they? What's, what's well, the, you said they're called? Uh, they're, they're for anybody with three thousand dollars to send on spend on a set of irons, and you better spend it fast because they only made five hundred of these for now. So this is and three hundred for the U.S. market, right? Yeah, so, so proof of concept, right? And you mentioned the layers. Each one of these heads is approximately, I say approximately because, you know, like a pitching wedge may not be the same as a four iron, but 2,600 layers. That's what we're talking about. 2,600 layers. So, like I said, sorcery takes 24 hours to print 20 heads or something like that. So, 2,600 layers, 500 sets worldwide, 300 in the U.S., roughly three grand a set. Lots of numbers. All the numbers, yeah. Um, Why would I buy one of these? Well, there's right now nothing else on the market like it. So if you're if you're the guy that likes to have something different, uh, here you go. It's being positioned, and, and it really is because we've had these conversations for years, right? Like mm-hmm. the the holy grail of iron design and what that really is, or what that looks mm-hmm. like, and what it looks like is a small, a compact, whatever you want to call it, like a, a a head that that pretty much every golfer likes the look of, right? That that true sure. player's iron shape. Mm-hmm. But with the forgiveness of a game improvement iron and, and looking at Cobra's MOI charts, forgiveness that goes beyond what you would get in a game improvement iron. So you get, you know, really a super forgiving iron that's smaller than a King Tour. 
that's your comparison. If you've seen the King Tour, it's not a blade. Mm-hmm. It's not a. It's not the small cavity back, but it's the next thing in line. It's that that tour iron kind of Cobra's answer to something like a T100 in that space. Yep. Like a a player's iron with a little bit of technology. So it's what smaller Ricky's than that, playing, right? So smaller is, than that, that. That's the Ricky Fowler bag. Yeah. Or Ricky Fowler club. Smaller than that. More forgiving than anything else, pretty much on the market right now, and certainly within the Cobra lineup. So okay. again, that's that's the idea of the Holy Grail. There is is sort so, of separating form and function. So yeah, at least it, and, and we talk about this a lot. How what is technology, and 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 to me, what is you know innovation? What is advancement? And to me, one of the first places I go is it's taking existing trade offs in the industry. In either mitigating or eliminating, you know, eliminating those trade offs entirely, right? Like we saw it with Ping this year in the 10K driver. Typically, drivers with a really low rear CG, high forgiveness drivers tend to be pretty spinny. So to be able to get a club that's really forgiving but low spin with good ball speed, right? Those tend to be trade offs. So can you mitigate those? Can we get the low spin and high ball speed? with a bunch of the forgiveness obviously i think ping broke some ground in that space what you're telling me here and again i haven't hit it you haven't hit it yet i think i have a seven iron maybe possibly showing up uh, that's what i've heard point. i think i think john got his so i'm i'm definitely anxious to try it and see kind of what it but looks the like, idea but... is that this thing should look like a player's iron i'm not going to say it's a muscle back yeah even though we may hear that, oh, it looks like a blade, but plays like a game improvement club. I'm not willing to go that far just yet, but thinner, like, like I said, in, in the Cobra lineup, size-wise, it sits in between the CB and the King Tour. So somewhere right in there in terms of aesthetics, right? But in terms of performance, we're saying that this thing is like game improvement level forgiveness. So something you would expect to get out of something that's a lot bigger, a lot chunkier, a lot uh, less aesthetically pleasing. So that's what we're trying to offset. Yeah, How the hell did they do it? it, it I was just going to say, so so much of everything we talk about in golf that gets in golf club design that gets billed as technology, right? The latest technology, so much of it is just saving weight somewhere so that you can put it where it's actually useful. And you talk about casting right you can't you can't sort of do the the whole thing that makes this powerful or makes this work is an intricate lattice structure that supports the face without having you say lettuce or lattice lattice okay good lettuce Lettuce would be good so (laughs) but so you're using this lattice structure this 3d printed dodecahedral lattice structure that is way more efficient than a solid structure in terms of weight savings. You can't do this in a casting. You can't cast these intricate structures in here. You, you, can't, you can't forge do it. it either. You can't yeah. forge it and you can't mill it. Where milling, you can kind of think of like if I want to mill a golf club, I just throw in a block of steel and cut away anything that doesn't look like a golf club. It's, I mean, that's kind of. Yeah, right. It's simplified, but that's really what it is. You don't have a lot of ability to cut deep internal pockets and things like that to you know, mm-hmm. cut out things and intricate structures and all that. So they're basically taking a whole lot of weight out of the middle of the club, still supporting yep. the face, controlling vibrations to the point where they tell us this feels like a blade. And now we've heard that story a thousand times. And that was the very first PXG story. Ah, it feels yeah, like a blade. It plays it feels, like a, it you feels know, like better than a game improvement iron. Doesn't feel yeah. like a blade, right? That's, that's kind of as close as we've seen to date. So we'll see sure. how that translates. But now you can now you can stick massive amounts up to a hundred grams of tungsten, depending on which loft of iron you're talking about. Anchor it deep in the center, still keeping the shape of that iron compact. Mm-hmm. And so you get like you know that's your perimeter weighting story, right? You get massive, massive weight yeah, low, and then the parameter. Yeah, yeah it's, stop there for a second. Sorcery. So this, la- this lattice. Sorcery. Structure, it's sorcery. So this lattice structure, like I said. I'm going to run to the door and grab the seven iron, see if I can show it to you. If, if that is what it is, I saw a guy just drop off a package literally right now. If that allows them to reposition a hundred grams of weight, that is a metric shit ton of weight in an iron. 
Yeah, like, and, and to be sure, like we've seen massive tungsten used. Everybody is trying to has used massive amounts of tungsten, but to do it in an iron with this shape. All right, I'm gonna go grab this thing real quick and then see what it looks like. Mood. Come on. Never mind. That wasn't it. It was a different package. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. So, there we How's go. That look? All right. Break. So I get this first part, the the lattice structure. So if I can take something and make the super intricate design that's a lot lighter that I can't do by forging or by casting. Okay, great. But how do they get it to feel still like again sorcery it's all that's all i got it's and again we don't know we don't know if that's true everybody tells us the story they show us the modal analysis slides that show oh yeah look at how everything deflects and how it looks like a blade right we'll see but again it, it's being able to control the allocation of mass where the supporting structures are which in tune in turn in tune and in turn controls yeah, vibrations wait, and ultimately that's that's where your your feel comes from so you know it, it strikes me as possible all right so that's great this comes out nobody listening to this is probably going to get a set like so there's 500 worldwide 300 in the u.s they'll be gone before whatever they're 3,000 each i don't really care about that part as much as i care about this next question which is is this going to lead to increased commercial availability of this stuff? Like, it, or is this going to be a new class of club here, certainly in the iron space, that is going to be forever more expensive than the existing, you know, if I want a great set of Mizunos, a great set of Strixons, retailing, you know, 1200 1300 1400 bucks, somewhere in there for a set of irons, okay. Are these always going to be... Two to three thousand dollars for for a set well, of these things. I think they'll be three thousand, and then they'll be twenty eight hundred, and this will come down. I, I think this is the future for a lot of reasons. I mean, not the least of which we talk about being able to replicate on the tour, for example. And this this is kind of one of these things. I think not everybody knew. I didn't know know it. It was it, when when Bryson played three D printed irons at the Masters, I believe, right. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a big deal. Oh, like, oh, Bryson's playing 3D. This is incredible. And you talk to the Cobra guys, and they're, they're kind of chuckling because Bryson has been playing 3D printed clubs from Cobra for years. It's a, a 3D printed utility iron since 2017. He played 3D printed tour ago. irons. Right. Ricky has played 3D printed wedges. Gary Woodland, Cobra 3D printed wedges. So this stuff has been around. Uh -huh. This is the first time it's been around for you and me and anybody else with three thousand dollars and a quick mouse button to make sure they order early. So it's kind of like the big PJ or the big tour secret is, I mean, maybe it's not big, but three D printed clubs have been out on tour in players' bags seven, eight years. Yeah, and it's and it's, nobody it's, knew. It's like, what's the viability of this? Like, we're going back way back. David Edel. David Adele was trying to print 3D dry or was trying to 3D print drivers at one point. Just it, the technology <laughs> wasn't ready at the time. Yeah. So I think I think we're reaching an era where this this is possible. Again, you can you can replicate any anything you've already done. So if you're if you have a, if you're Ricky Fowler for example and you've got a soul grind that was hand done, right? Mm -hmm. Dialed in, you absolutely love it, you want to change nothing, but you know those grooves are going to wear out. Scan it, 3D print it, and when you need it, 3D print it again and again yeah. and again. No degradation, yep. same thing over and over and over again. You're getting you're seeing, you know, Kyle Berkshire, Cobra made a 3D printed utility iron for him because mm -hmm. it's actually stronger, which also kind of blows my mind, but the conventional designs they had for him were cracking because, you know, most guys don't carry a utility iron 300 They're plus. They're swinging 120 miles in it, right? Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. it's, yeah, this is the future and we've talked about it and we tried to talk about it. Cobra didn't want to talk about it. Right. But when we look at the implications for, say, driver design where... Let's go there. So yeah, where, if, where, this is, if this is, in fact, the future, the next wave of of manufacturing right we have casting forging things the only thing undefeated right in in all of history is progress so there is something that's next whatever that next is let's say that it is this let's say that it is 3d printing because like you just mentioned you can prototype in-house much much quicker 
right? Going from CAD designs to models to things you can actually hit. Within hours. Within, within hours. hours. As opposed so to be can, like, here, you know, let's send it overseas, have them make it for us, ship us back, maybe it works. I'll tweet this thing back and forth now. Yep. It's entirely self-serve. Yep, so it's way quicker. Uh, you can do more intricate designs. Clearly, way more intricate designs. Than any other existing method. As with any new technology, it's cost-diversive in, in, in most applications initially. For now. But, for now. For now. But let's assume those costs get resolved as they always do. Nostradamus. What's next? Where where could this go? Let's play let's play Magic Eight Ball for a couple I, minutes. I just like like the driver is the obvious thing. If only because we've seen patents with you know different com- companies already having patents for lattice structures behind the face, right? Trying to mm-hmm. instead of the solid thing having a layered thing. We've seen, for example, tailor made carbon face. What is what is the whole point of carbon face? It's not right. okay. Yeah, it's different. Makes for a good story, but also massive, massive weight savings over a solid chunk of metal. Mm-hmm. And that's Even if that's that kind of really light. It's it's never going to be as light. I mean, you know, we've gone, for example, from, I want to say, 100 and something grams, typical kind of face core, if you will, down mm-hmm. to 10 to 12 grams, if memory serves on this. So massive weight savings doing it this way. If you can translate that to the driver and you can do it in sure. such a way. So this is the piece that TaylorMade has struggled with with carbon is you take out all of that weight. And then find a way not to give it all back with glue and things like that. So if you can make <laughs> right, a solid structure to support that, right? Faith, so if you can make yeah. a, a solid structure that doesn't require a whole bunch of weight to to kind of sustain it, yeah. now you've got a massive savings that you can right put at the perimeter. You can put back. You can you, radius of gyration, right? Just send it to the to the edges so that you yeah. get stability and speed, whatever it happens to be. So. Mm-hmm. You know, anytime you can save a massive amount of weight in the golf equipment design world, good things tend to happen. And with 3D printing, it just seems like this is this is an incredibly viable and efficient way to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to me, the, the other two things that are interesting to think about are, yeah, no doubt, when you can really start saving weight and you can do it quickly. So we talk about this whole idea of iterative design right and say hey if this is my best design idea today how do i get ten thousand more ideas and right now that takes time that's why we don't see really meaningful benefit to the consumer every year every other year driver designs like i said maybe it's five seven years before we actually see real quantifiable benefit for mass the mass consuming public but with something like this could there be more discrete models really quickly? Could there be 10 different fairway woods, depending on what you want? Could there be, you know, with drivers, are we going to get closer to this one of one type idea? I mean, we talked about this with uh, with Paradigm, right? With AI, so how they iterated faces based on swing profiles and types and say, hey, this driver is now designed more for people like you or with your swing characteristics, presumably, what if there were 31 iterations and it's, and I take a couple swings and I do that and now they match me up with one of 30 heads as opposed to one of three? I think I think 3D printing makes that viable. It, it that makes it possible because wild. you're not because again you can it's entirely self serve. You can you know tweak a design. You you can make that design already. And instead of having to send everything overseas to a factory where you have volume requirements and things like that, Mm -hmm. you can kind of look at this as a double-edged sword, right? You're, what did I say, 20-something heads you're printing at a time? Yeah, Um, something like that. Right now, per machine. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if you only want to (laughs) to print 20-something, right? That's, it's it's a perfect scenario. So it, it allows you to kind of take control of your own production and not have to overproduce or mm-hmm. or not be able to produce on demand so i think yeah i think the well, sky's stay the tuned. limit on this, this. One, yeah like i said it's interesting it's, it's interesting because it is again cobra which has always you know i think pushed envelopes and innovative things and in, in certain directions no doubt and um it'll be interesting to see to what degree this creates or establishes any traction is this something we see from other companies moving forward in the next 
design cycle or two? Or is this going to be something that, you know, in 10 years we come back and say, hey, look, now so-and-so has a 3D printed this. Yeah, I, I, would, I would bet that we see a lot of this and we see it pretty quickly. That's, okay. that's where I'm putting my money. Tony's money's on it. Speaking of other things that we're going to see or see relatively quickly, a new L grind, Tony, and a new oh. Pro V1, kind of? Yeah, starting with the L grind. So second, second Vokey Wedge Works release of the year. So this is an L grind. You're familiar with the L grind. It was in the lineup as stock all the way back to, what did I say, SM5, I think, was yeah. as far it back a, as I could a, find it. It was Stable. the lowest bounce. Staple of the lineup. T grind kind of took over. It's taken over on tour. So L grind is kind of an illustrates what Vokey is starting to do with Wedgeworks, which is like, hey, we've got these staple designs. We it's too many to put them on retail in, in retail all the time, but sure. you can you can put it up on uh, on Wedgeworks if somebody wants it, they can go get it. So like the low yep. bounce K, it's it's not a limited edition. It's going to stay in the lineup for the for the run of the SM10 yep. release. 58, 60 degrees, four degrees of bounce in both cases, raw finish, 225 each. There you go. So the Pro V1, not new, new aesthetic. This is a very Titleist thing, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. This is like a quintessential Titleist move, uh, I think. Um, I bet you went to go grab a sample, just like I, I just did, I just I happened to bring it up, so okay. there you go. This what do we is, got here? This is called Pro V1 Enhanced Alignment, and so, you know, it's... Two lines, one each on either side of the side stamp. So it's not, you know, it's not p- Titleist take on picks. They're not going crazy. It's just a, a subtle option. And if you, you can go to Titleist Custom on the, the Pro V1, then they already have like, I think, 40 something custom alignment aids that you may not even yeah. know exist. So this is just one more. It's not, you know, this isn't, this isn't not groundbreaking. This is not going to, this is, this is not the 3D printing of golf ball alignment aids by any stretch. It's right. you know, just something what different something? if you want something different. Something. That's, that's all and I this week, uh, for those of you that are big into the electric caddy mafia, as I am, I love the, the electric caddy around the course. Stuart Golf came out their Q Follow, uh, which is ranked exceptionally highly in our in our testing for, for several years. It is... Um, a fantastic unit. They came out with some new colors. They actually look really cool. It's kind of carbon colorway stuff. Not, you know, it's not a new unit. That itself. Well, I mean, the Vertex yeah. is the newer unit, and that's a, a little bit less expensive. But they actually came out with some really new colors, and I think it looks pretty good. Well, and there is more to it than than just colors. Like it's, I mean, we see, you know, it's kind of the hot thing to do, right? Let's let's throw a carbon weave pattern on on everything because it looks right. cool. This is actually a ceramic coating that they put on it, and then they make it look like carbon fiber. But it's a it's a ceramic coating that the basically short version is it increases durability, so it adds strength yeah. to the actual structure and kind of just helps kind of protect, if you will. It's like a it's a protectant. For those of you that have a penchant for maybe tipping them, as I've done once or twice, I'll tell you a story about one time I. Uh, Sent mine into a river. That's a, a story for a different day. All right. Last question. We're going to finish up uh, with this PGA Championship. Do you expect Tiger to do anything more than make the cut? No. No. I, I do think, like, he made the cut at Masters. He did. Which was more than I expected him to do. But, yeah, I mm-hmm. think in terms of wa- about walking, right, what is the wear and tear? Ball Hall mm-hmm. is going to be a little easier than Augusta, so... You know, I think he can make the cut. I don't expect anything more than that, but, you know, I would probably say that in any situation for Tiger right now. I hope he proves me wrong because it's it's awesome for golf when he's at the top of the leaderboard or near it going into Sunday. That's how you get people to watch. I wish, man. It's about the only way you get people to watch golf. So, you know. I would love that. I'm just not seeing it. I think if he were to top 50, that would be a phenomenal result. And I think... I think making the cut is more in jeopardy in this event than others. Ooh. So I'm going to... Hmm, I don't know that he even makes the cut. I will not be surprised if he doesn't. That's what I said last time, and people let me have it. So there yeah, you they, go. Well, they can let me have it this time. Let's see what All happens. Right. All right. You can have it. PJ Championship Week. There we go. We'll see what happens. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all those things. You'll have questions. You'll have ideas. Let us know what those are. 
We out.